decided that I was only three or four and I'd gone with my parents that I should be given this money for apparently being not too badly behaved on the day of the funeral. <laughs> How nice. How very nice. Well, it's by the firm of Rue, which was Rue et de Caen. Uh -huh. And they were operating in Paris, late 19th century. And Rue took it on. Um, and during 1910, this was probably made. Yes. It's quite a late example of an automaton. Oh, we've got to be careful of the string. It's winding itself round. And they're very popular. They also made squirrels in a tree trunk oh. and um, various other animals. And uh, at the moment, at auction, they make somewhere in the region of six to eight hundred pounds. Do they really? <gasps> it's a very nice peasant. It's very exciting, yes. He really is the typical Turk sitting mm -hmm. on his... Well, he ought to really be on a Turkish carpet. He's not on a Turkish <laughs> carpet, but he's sitting there with his turban on, with this beautifully embroidered jacket. And I think what tickles me, actually, is, are his Turkish slippers, one resting on the top and the other one actually, mm -hmm. actually on on his foot. He's drinking a cup of coffee, I presume sickly Turkish coffee. I think so. <laughs> and he's got a hookah pipe next to him. Wind him up. Set him off. Now, there, he actually inhales from his hookah pipe and off he goes, puffing. Oh. <laughs> terrible, terrible. Obviously Turkish cigarettes as yes. well. This is almost certainly a Vichy automaton. But the interesting thing is that the winding up key here at the back has the initials LB, mm -hmm. which I think is for the maker Lambert. Yes. So it looks as though it could have been um, a kind of joint operation between Vichy uh -huh. and, and Lambert and would have been bought back from a trip to Paris as, as a novelty mm -hmm. item. And it would have been made, I would have thought, round about 1890 or 1900. Having said all that, one has to say that this would be worth between five and seven thousand yes. pounds on, on, mm -hmm. of anybody's money. Mm -hmm. um, this chap has been singing all the morning on its own, almost impossible to stop. You know it's Swiss. Yes. Do you call it anything in particular? The Rebel. The Rebel. Why, well, could he won't stop? Well, let's take a chance and start him because they're very, very. He, he is a rebel. He's not even going to do it now at all. Here he comes. He does run down so quickly. No, no, these to me are very, very clever because the tiniest little, not quite a musical box, um, but little bellows under here which sort of open and shut and really puff this sound out because in a quiet room, this, this is quite noisy, isn't it? And yes, I, I yes. think, here he goes. That's very, very nice. Of course, he won't stop now, but he'll go on. We, we don't mind that. His head moves and his mouth moves, as you can see. He probably could have a little bit more movement on the mouth. So he's got music, he's got head movement, mouth movement, and his arm. And that is really quite unusual. But what is interesting, you say you thought it was bearskin. Bearskin is much rougher than that. Yeah. I mean, it's really rough yeah. and, and heavy. And this, I think, is some sort of um, cocony, cocony, um, like a rabbit, rabbit a type yes. of rabbit. Mm -hmm. um, but he's a great character, isn't he? Lovely. Um, I suppose, have you any idea of his value? Not really. No. Yeah. Well, I can see at auction he would make somewhere in the region of between twelve and fifteen hundred pounds. What is that? It's key wound. It's a magician automaton, and we can see when we turn him on in a moment that he's a musical box, mm -hmm. and he also moves his eyes, his lips, his hands, and different tricks will appear here on the table. And the best thing of all about it is the condition. It's in marvellous original condition. Yes. I think we ought to give it a go. So yes. let's let's actually get it get it going.
What about automata? Birds in a cage, magicians doing this, that, and the other. Have you ever seen one so large as this? I haven't seen one as large as this outside a museum. And I also haven't seen one which has quite as many movements or is in such good condition. What is so nice, of course, is that it's in its original clothing. It hasn't been redressed at any stage. And altogether, he's looking very impressive, I think. He's got his lace cuffs and so on. He has a variety of movements, um, some of them more complex than others, and would have been made in France round about um, 1880, which, I don't know, might fit in with something that you already know about its past no. history. When, when did you get it? It was bought by my grandfather um, at an auction sale, a big house in Kent, for my youngest aunt when she was three years old, and that was 1897. It ties up nicely, doesn't yes. it? Yes. <clears throat> it's a surprising thing to have given to a child so young because it's not actually a toy. No. It wasn't given to her as a toy. No. It was just for her. Yes. It's rather an adult toy. It was used as an after-dinner entertainment almost. To actually put a value on an item like this is difficult because, as I said, it's a really museum piece. But I would have thought at an auction he should realize between six and eight thousand pounds. <laughs> Hilary Kay and the troubadour she found in Bognor Regis, her own personal desert island choice from all the many wonderful things she's seen on the Antiques Roadshow. Do join us again soon.